In this video, we're going to go through animal cell structure. So animal cells are obviously eukaryotic cells. They have a nucleus. They have membrane bound organelles like mitochondria and endoplasmic reticulum. We're basically going to make sure we can label the structures and then we're going to go through the structure and function of all of the important organelles. So let's have a look at an animal cell and let's go through and just make sure we can label the structures. So we've got mitochondria, which are a membrane bound organelle, and you can recognize the mitochondria because they've got this highly folded inner membrane, the fold, we call them cristae. We've got ribosomes, which are super small. They're not membrane bound organelles, but they do consist of two subunits made out of RNA and protein. These, by the way, are ATS ribosomes that we find in the cytoplasm and also attached to the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Then we've got the cytoplasm, which fills the cell. We've got some lysosomes here. Now, lysosomes are a type of vesicle, specifically vesicles that contain hydrolytic enzymes or digestive enzymes. We've got some rough endoplasmic reticulum. Now it's called rough because it actually has ribosomes attached to its surface. Again, these are ATS ribosomes, so it looks rough under the microscope. We've got the Golgi apparatus, also known as the Golgi body. We've got the cell surface membrane, or we can call it the plasma membrane, which is obviously your phospholipid bilayer made out of phospholipids with proteins embedded and cholesterol. We've got the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Looks very much like the rough endoplasmic reticulum, but smooth because there's no ribosomes on its surface. And then we've got the nucleus. Let's just label some more parts of the nucleus. So within the nucleus, we have the nucleolus. We also have the nuclear plasm, which fills the nucleus. And around the outside of the nucleus, we've got the nuclear membrane or the nuclear envelope, which is another double membrane bound organelle. Okay, let's go through each one of these then. So first of all, we're gonna start with the nucleus and we're gonna think about the structure of the nucleus. So it's got a nuclear envelope or a nuclear membrane. It is a double membrane. So there's actually two phospholipid bilayers. Same as the mitochondria, they also have a double membrane. Same as chloroplasts in plant cells, they also have a double membrane. So two phospholipid bilayers. In the nuclear envelope, there are nuclear pores, which are small holes in the nuclear envelope, and they allow the passage of messenger RNA out of the nucleus. So that can be one of the functions of the nuclear envelope and the nuclear pores. The nuclear plasm, a granular jelly-like material. Now this is where the genetic material is found in the nucleoplasm. So this is where we find the chromosomes, which are made of chromatin. Remember chromatin is DNA and histones. So the chromatin is DNA that wraps itself around the histone proteins to form the linear chromosomes. And they're in the nucleoplasm. The nucleolus, the spherical region inside the nucleus, which we can see in pink over here. Now the nucleolus makes ribosomes. Let me just rub this out so you can see. It makes ribosomes. So in terms of linking structures and functions, if we name the nucleolus as a structure, we can say it's responsible for making those ribosomes. Got a little definition of chromatin for you here. So DNA tightly wrapped around histone proteins is called chromatin. And in eukaryotic cells, it's then packaged into linear chromosomes, which as we said before, are found in the nucleoplasm. Finally, the DNA specifically codes for the production of polypeptides. It contains triplets of bases, so sets of three bases, and each triplet is the code for one amino acid. So what we say is that the order of bases in DNA determines the order of amino acids in the protein. Let's have a look at the cytoplasm, and in the cytoplasm we have the cytoskeleton as well. So the cytoplasm is a granular fluid that fills the cell. We know this from GCSE. It contains enzymes, chemical reactions occur here. Again, we know this from GCSE. 
One chemical reaction that you could name is anaerobic respiration because that occurs in the cytoplasm. Inside the cytoplasm, we find the cytoskeleton, which is a network of protein filaments, which we can call microtubules and microfilaments. So these are protein filaments that run across the cytoplasm, forming the cytoskeleton. What are they used for? Well, they do have many functions. So some of the ones we can give, they provide mechanical strength to the cell. They support organelles, keeping the organelles in position. They're also used to transport vesicles around the cytoplasm and move chromosomes during cell division. So if you're taking OCR biology, you might be asked to give two or three different functions of the cytoskeleton. Let's have a look at the ribosomes. Ribosomes are very small organelles. They are not membrane bound, and we should know that they are found in eukaryotic and prokaryotic cells. You find them free in the cytoplasm, but also bound to the surface of the rough endoplasmic reticulum. And these would be our ATS ribosomes that we find in the cytoplasm and attached to the rough ER in a eukaryotic cell. They consist of two subunits, a larger subunit and a smaller subunit and they are made from protein and ribosomal RNA, which has come up on the exam before. ATS ribosomes are larger than the 70S ribosomes that we found in prokaryotic cells. So that can be a difference between those two types of ribosomes. Also, don't forget that mitochondria and chloroplasts do have their own ribosomes and they would be the smaller 70S type. So the same type that we have in the prokaryotic cells. They are the site of protein synthesis that we learn at GCSE. At A level, we say it's where translation takes place because it's where the messenger RNA is used as the genetic code to actually put those amino acids together in order to form the polypeptide chain. Let's think about the rough ER. So it's a 3D system of sheet-like membranes spreading throughout the cell. The membranes form a series of flattened sacs. So you can use, uh, use this word cystine to describe the flattened sacs that form the rough endoplasmic reticulum. It's rough, it has ribosomes attached to its surface, which is quite easy to remember. It provides a large surface area to synthesize proteins. Obviously it has lots of ribosomes on its surface. We know that ribosomes are the sites of protein synthesis but it also transports those proteins and it will package them into vesicles for transport to the Golgi body or the Golgi apparatus. Moving on to the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, very similar in structure to the rough endoplasmic reticulum. So again, it's a 3D system of sheet-like membranes. The membranes form those flattened sacs, which again, we can call cystine. Similar to the rough ER then, but with no ribosomes attached to its surface, so it would look smooth under the microscope. Now the smooth endoplasmic reticulum synthesizes, we can say stores and transports lipids and carbohydrates. So not proteins, but it's synthesizing lipids and carbohydrates and transporting them. Again, they will be transported to the Golgi apparatus, which we're going to do next. So the Golgi apparatus, I mean, you might get it confused with the endoplasmic reticulum, but I'm going to explain in a little way that you can make sure you label them correctly. Again, it's a stack of membrane bound flattened sacs. So it does look similar to the smooth ER especially, except it does tend to look more compact. So a little bit fatter, if you like. And you can often spot the Golgi body as it has secretory vesicles close by. So you can see them here on the diagram, okay? Little secretory vesicles that have budded off from the Golgi body will be close by. The Golgi body receives proteins from the rough ER and lipids from the smooth ER and carbohydrates from the smooth ER as well. It can then modify, which is probably the best word to use, modify proteins. It can modify lipids. For example, it can make glycoproteins by adding a sugar or a carbohydrate chain to the protein. It then packages them into vesicles for transport. We can also say it sorts proteins 
or it sorts lipids. You'll see that word on mark schemes as well. But things like modifying proteins and lipids, sorting proteins and lipids, and packaging proteins and lipids into vesicles for transport. That's what we'd say for the function. It does form lysosomes. So these are a particular type of vesicle which contain hydrolytic enzymes. You might get questions specifically about lysosomes. So if the Golgi body packages digestive enzymes into one of these vesicles, we would call that vesicle a lysosome. Okay, the secretory vesicles then. So these are the vesicles that bud off from the Golgi body or the Golgi apparatus. They are very simple in structure. They're just small membrane bound sacs. They bud off from the Golgi body to package and transport a substance such as enzymes. These vesicles will move towards and fuse with the cell surface membrane and the contents will be released by exocytosis, which is a type of bulk transport. So it does require ATP. These vesicles may contain proteins such as enzymes. Finally, I think, got a lot of organelles to do. We've got the mitochondria, maybe my favorite organelle. Again, it's a double membrane. So like the nucleus and like chloroplasts in plant cells, it has a double membrane. So two phospholipid bilayers. The inner membrane is folded into cristae. So the inner membrane, if we do a quick little picture here, here's the outer membrane. So you've got a phospholipid bilayer there. The inner membrane is highly folded. Okay, it's another phospholipid bilayer, but it's highly folded, really large surface area, and the folds are called cristae. And this is about providing a large surface area for aerobic respiration. So lots of ATP can be produced. It's actually the final stage of respiration that takes place on the Criste. It's called oxidative phosphorylation, which you learn about in year 13, but it makes loads of ATP. So the more highly folded, the more surface area, the more ATP can be produced in that final stage of aerobic respiration. Inside the mitochondria, so here, We've got the matrix, which is the fluid filled center of the mitochondria. It does contain proteins, lipids, and importantly, the mitochondria's own ribosomes, which are the smaller 70S ones, like we have in the prokaryotic cells, and its own DNA, which is circular. Again, like prokaryotic DNA is circular. This DNA is also not associated with histone proteins, so it is very much like prokaryotic DNA. Because they have their own ribosomes and their own DNA, mitochondria can synthesize their own proteins, for example, enzymes that they do need in aerobic respiration. Obviously, different cell types have different numbers of mitochondria, depending on how much ATP they need. So muscle cells, for example, have a large number of mitochondria. Um, sperm cells have a large number of mitochondria, neurons have a large number of mitochondria because they need a lot of ATP, because they need a lot of energy. You can also see a difference in how folded the inner membrane is. So some cells have much more fo highly folded inner membranes and more cristae to increase this surface area even further. So even more ATP can be produced. That is it, let me go back. That is it for this video. Make sure you check out my future videos on YouTube because we are gonna be posting more about cells. So we're gonna be looking at plant cells as well as prokaryotic cells, viral structure and HIV if you are studying AQA. I hope you found this video useful. You can use it to make your own notes because what I've given you basically is really detailed notes on structure and function for each of these organelles.